Hi, we're going to talk about some nice things today. Some special things for me and some special things for you, too. Can you say refrigerator? I knew you could. Okay, I'm back. Hey, I wanted to talk to you about refrigerators for your schoolie or coach conversion, your ambulance. We have or have had all three, and this is in response really, or was prompted by a Facebook post from a gentleman who I won't name, who was talking about DC refrigerators are a ripoff, and that this chart proved that DC refrigerators were a ripoff. Now, I am not going to try to tell you which you should use, whether you use a DC refrigerator or an AC refrigerator or a propane. I have all three. We have a bus that's got a propane fridge in it. It does require either 12 volt or 120 volt power. We have a 120 volt refrigerator in the crown we're converting. And then I've got a DC refrigerator right now in an ambulance conversion, kind of an expedition rig. I've had all three of them before. I am a fan, so this is not a which is right video, but I did want to at least talk about the thinking here and where I think this gentleman, not Mr. Demers, uh, but the gentleman who made this post and referenced this chart of refrigerator comparison, I think he's mistaken and left something out. And so it was a good opportunity since the weather's bad and it's blowing 60 or 70 mile an hour winds outside with snow that uh, I go through some of the calculations and give you some examples and some basic math. There's boring math here, I'm sorry, but give you some math that you can use when you're evaluating the energy consumption and your energy plan for either a DC refrigerator or an AC refrigerator. First off, let's consider what you have to include with a DC refrigerator. You've got to have your battery bank and that's it. You can turn your inverter off if you're running a DC refrigerator. If you are running an AC refrigerator, you've got to leave the inverter on. Now this gentleman that made the post, not Mr. Demers or Demers, sorry, uh, said that, you know, inverters are, you know, you lose five to 10% during the conversion from DC to AC so if you're going from a 12 volt battery bank to 120 volt AC, you do lose a little bit through that conversion process. And most inverters nowadays are well over 90% efficient in that conversion. But what I want to address is when that inverter is not powering your fridge, how much energy is consuming a concept or a thing called idle current draw. So let's go out to the shop here and I'll show you something. Here's an example I happen to have inside the shop. This is a, an older model, but very well built and not inexpensive. Xantrax Pure Sine Wave Inverter. This is a thousand watt inverter. I know it's upside down, but that's the way it mounts. And right now it's powered up. It's in power save mode. There is nothing running on it. I've got this plugged in, but that is off. So what is idle current? Idle current is the amount of power. Now, power is an instantaneous measure. Energy is power over time. So right now we're going to measure the power that this is drawing. Let me put my meter in AC amps and clamp it around the lead there. And we are right now drawing just a bit over one amp. And that's with nothing on. This is in power save mode. It's waiting for it to detect a load and then it will power up. During the conversion from 12 volts DC to 120 volts AC, this is about 90% efficient. Most good inverters nowadays are 90% plus efficient in converting that. But what a lot of people don't take into account is how much an inverter draws the resting current, or more commonly the idle current, while well, it's just sitting there waiting for something to happen. So right now, it's drawing just a bit over one amp. If you left this on then for 24 hours, 
heck, I don't need a calculator for that. One amp over 24 hours of time, you just took 24 amp hours out of your 12 volt battery bank just for leaving the inverter on. Let's look at some other examples inside where it's not so nasty. I mean, it's nasty just because it's nasty weather outside today, not because the shop is nasty. I showed you just quickly out there with that Xantrex inverter what idle current actually is. So how do you find the idle current specs on the inverter you are planning to use? Let's look at a few websites here. This is the Xantrex website for their ProWatt that comes in 600,000 or 2,000 watt versions. Go to like tech specs or documents and you'll find it. So if we scroll down here, you're looking for something like no load current draw. So for the 540 or the 900 watt versions, I'm sorry, those are the 600 or 1000 watt versions, you're looking at just under 0.6 amps. And for the 2000 watt version, you're looking at just under 0.8 amps. If we go to Renergy's site for the popular 3000 watt Renergy inverter, and go down here to their specs. Sorry, input specs. No load current draw is 2.5 amps, 3000 watt inverter. Here's the Ames power. The Ames power has theirs listed. Where is it? Do you see it? If you see it, tell me. Oh, that's right, <laughs> the Ames doesn't list theirs. Some of the cheaper, or I would say uh, less quality oriented manufacturers um, will not list those specs. So let's go to their thousand watt, which is UL listed or ETL listed to UL standards. And that one does show power saver idle consumption 7.5 watts. Regular idle consumption is 12 and a half watts. Now this is for a thousand watt inverter. This is not the, th the other one because it didn't list it for the 3000 watt inverter. And then another way to find out, I love Midnight Solar. They carry quality products to ask the manufacturer. So on the 5048 inverter, I'll, I'll do the math on. Idle current with power saver on is 27 watts, without is 43 watts. That's a 5,000 watt inverter. All right, let's go do some math. Okay, what do we do with those figures? So here's one I didn't show you, but the Xantrex X Power, a small 450 watt inverter, they list it at a quarter of an amp, 0.25 amps of idle current draw. So when I design a solar system, I like to design it so that you have a smaller inverter that is big enough to run your, maybe your TV, your computer chargers, your bedside, bedside alarm clock, or things like that, that you want plugged in all the time, your electric toothbrush charger, things that you can't run off 12 volts. Something like this you could afford to leave on all the time. So a quarter of an amp times 24 hours and you draw six amp hours from your battery bank. So if you have a 100 amp hour battery bank, 100 amp hour usable, you just used six amp hours to leave that on. So that's manageable. What about the bigger one? The 600 or 1000 watt inverters were 0.6 amps or slightly under. So let's do 0.5 amps times 24 hours. And now you see how you get the amp hours because you're taking the current draw over time to give you amp hours. So of course I can do this math in my head. Half of 24 is 12 amp hours. I did 0.5 because it says it's less than 0.6. So let's give them a little benefit here. Over here for the 2000 watt inverter, let's say 0.7 amps. Now I've got this already done off screen here. I'm not that good with math in my head. So 0.7 times 24 
is 16.8 amp hours. And these are all out of a 12 volt battery bank, just so we're being consistent. So 16, almost 17 amp hours to leave this 2000 watt Xantrex inverter on. Xantrex makes great quality stuff. You'll find that as you get to lesser quality stuff, the current draw tends to go up. Here's a Renogy 3000 watt inverter, and they say it uses less than 2.5 amps. So let's do 2.4 amps times 24 hours. And that is, get this, 57.6 amp hours. So if you have a 100 amp hour battery bank, you used over half of it just leaving your inverter on for 24 hours. And that's why it's so important to factor in the idle current draw when you are designing your system. And that's why that guy's comment about uh, DC refrigerators being crap, I think wrong, because he didn't take into account any of these figures or factors. So let's look at an Ames. And I think it's telling that Ames doesn't even list the idle current draw for the 3000 watt inverter. So we can't do that one. Their 1000 watt inverter, they list in watts. And watts are great, that's fine. But how do you convert watts to amperage? We're gonna divide that by the voltage, let's say nominal 12. So basically 12.5 divided by 12, let's do one, I can figure that out. And then one times 24, help me out here, 24 amp hours, okay, to leave this one on. So I can do that math. Uh, Midnight Solar, one of my favorite companies, makes a, well, they sell a product that is sold under a bunch of different brands, but I like the Midnight version. It's the same as some of the others, except Midnight offers US-based support. I know the owners, the, the Gudgels who founded the company, great people. Uh, they originally founded Outback Solar. They were at Xantrex before, left Xantrex to start Outback, and then uh, started Bindite Solar. So great quality products. Their uh, surge protectors are really second to none and very affordable. But anyway, the 5048 DIY is a cool setup. It's a combination unit. I'm not really that big a fan of combo units, but I like these. So it's a charger, charge controller, and inverter. This is a 5,000 watt, 48 volt setup. So it's a big inverter. And I checked with them and with the power saver on, they say it's got 24 watts of idle consumption. So 24 divided by 12 gives you 2.25 amps. And then times 24, and that's 54 amp hours to leave that on for 24 hours. And again, that's a big inverter. So you'll notice that their 5,000 watt inverter actually uses less energy than the 3000 watt Renergy. And that really is kind of related to build quality. If you leave the power saver off, you've got 43 watts of consumption divided by 12 is 3.58. Again, I am looking at a sheet. I'm not doing this in my head times 24 hours. And that gives you 86 amp hours you just took out of your battery bank to leave this inverter on which is why I like to have a bigger inverter for running your, your Instapot or your uh, tea kettle, your coffee maker in the morning, your blow dryer if you need it, things like that, your microwave. Turn the big inverter on with the remote switch that's handy right there in your kitchen and then turn it off when you're not using it and default to a smaller inverter. But if you are running a refrigerator, it's likely that unless you have a big, small inverter, you will probably have to have your large inverter on. And most of the people doing the calculations like that, that Facebook post don't take this into account. And then there's the POS 3000. I don't know, I don't know what the name is, but I did these calculations last year for another customer and their 3000 watt inverter, when I looked it up, drew seven amps per hour. Seven amps, <laughs> really inefficient, but cheap inverters tend to draw more idle current. Seven amps times 24 hours, that gives you a whopping 168 amp hours just sucked out of your battery bank 
only for leaving the inverter on. So it's an important thing to factor into your calculations. Let's now look at some of the refrigerator draw. So the sheet that gentleman posted is marked crazy camper. I don't know who that is, but he lists a bunch of refrigerators here, starting with 12 volt models and then down here to 120 volt models, 110, 120, same thing, old school or now. And the guy who posted picked the LG down here. He's got the model number. So when you look at a refrigerator, if you're considering a 120 volt version, a 120 volt version, back off the coffee. Uh, if you buy one of these or look at one of these in the store, it will have the Energy Star rating and an estimate of kilowatt hours per year. So that's how many thousand watt hours that would consume per year. And it's a pretty good guide. So the energy rating for this or consumption for the year was 339 kilowatt hours. So let's do a little more math, which I already did here. 339 kilowatt hours per year is 339,000 watt hours. Got to put that in there. Divide that by 365 days and you end up with 928.8 watt hours per day. Now, how do you convert from watt hours to amp hours? Well, take that 928.8 watt hours, divide it by your system voltage. Now I did 12 volts. That's kind of a nominal. Your system will range anywhere from 12 up to 14 volts, depending upon its charge state. But we design around 12 volts and that's pretty common if you have a 12 volt battery bank. So 928.8 divided by 12 gives you 77.397. So 77.4 amp hours per day to run that refrigerator. And that's good to know, but it's hard to calculate correctly what your energy needs are if you don't factor in that maybe your inverter takes 86 amp hours or for this energy up here, 57 amp hours per day. So 77, say you have a 3000 watt Renergy inverter, 57.6 amp hours it takes just to be on. And then you're drawing 77 amp hours per day for your fridge. Now, of course, while the fridge is running, you could deduct the idle current because now you're actually converting and working but that might be 10% of the day, 20% of the day max. Anyway, these are pretty good figures. They're big enough at least you see that if you leave this one out, you could totally screw up your, your energy estimation, your calculations, your needs, and you're not gonna have enough power if you're planning on running off. Say you have a 100 amp hour battery bank, you could run this all night and all day for 24 hours without charging it. But if you count in the inverter idle time or idle current, you're not going to make it. So anyway, this is important. I think with this math now, you can figure it out. Make sure you include these. So in closing, like I say all the time, I don't want you to be sad. And if you design your system and you leave these details out, that is not an insignificant detail. If you don't have your cold beer or all your meat rots because your refrigerator shut off because you ran out of juice, you're going to be sad. So anyway, I hope this helps you not be sad. Have a great day, folks. Oh, and what's the opposite of sad? Happy. I want you to be this happy. Happy as a sheep getting their back scratched because they wear a scritchy wool coat all the time. Happy.